What a beauty. Let's just come in and have a look inside the back of the trailer. <clears throat> Excuse me. This got a pretty good setup in here for charging all the uh, cameras, different cameras, GoPros and whatever, and also uh, satellite phones and UHFs. Because you're out in the Nunga, you need all that. But basically up here, I have an inverter, which is... Uh, Converting the 12 volts into 240, and so I'm charging some rechargeable double A's up there, and also that allows me to charge the battery camera and various other things. Run the lighting, it's all done from one 12 volt battery and solar panels on the roof, and that will go indefinitely. While we're here, you can see all where I keep all my clamps, raincoats. I even got the guitar in there, believe it or not. Might get that out sooner or later. <laughs> that could be a bit of a worry. Here, yeah, more clamps for uh, clamping paintings. But it's a great box. It allows me to, obviously, there's the plain air box here. This is where all the paintings are in this. But it allows me to uh, paint on location in really remote areas and paint heaps of pictures and at the same time if I'm having exhibitions I can empty the trailer and fill it up with finished paintings and take it to the exhibition so there's plenty of room so it's great all round. There at the moment I've got the fold out easel with a light run to the swag so I can see what I'm doing down there. The camera's going in and out of focus it's finding it hard for that lighting but anyway that's basically the setup. It's a great setup. No worries. Well, here we are, first light. Fantastic. Okay, now I've got the board. I've got the uh, LD, whatever that, <laughs> whatever that lighting's called. It's too early in the morning to remember. And uh, paints. Now I'm going to paint the door, and I've got a nice fire going over there, so it should be good. So still, so beautiful.
I've got it, LED lighting. It was in the back of my mind, I just had, I couldn't let it go until I thought of it. Right, got it, okay, now I can paint. Okay. Just grab a bit more paper towel. Stick that there, I reckon. All right, let's go. All right, what do I want to do? Just block in some stuff. Dark tones to start with, obviously. Go with a bigger knife to get the bulk in. Now, I can see what I'm doing, believe it or not, just. Let's have a look at this. I want. There we go, we've got the dark tone of the beautiful gorge itself. Working on a white surface. So we've got a lot of uh, stuff to put in to get rid of that whiteness. But that's fine. A bit more blue in the mix. So I'm using a mixture there of burnt sienna, cobalt blue, and a little bit of magenta, and that's making a really deep, beautiful, dark color. Look at that. This is plain air painting, isn't it? The modern Vincent. Instead of having candles on the top of my head, Got the artificial light in a different way. Okay, what am I going to go for there? Now I can see a cloud bank. It's about that colour there, which is a pinky sort of overcast. Now the fun here is I cannot let those darks touch the sky yet, otherwise we'll get in all sorts of strife. So I've just got to put it in and leave a bit of a gap there for now. That's where painting on raw linen is good because with the raw linen, that gap is not very noticeable, but at the moment, that is extremely noticeable. That white mark between the clouds and the horizon. Just take my time getting that right. Get it close. Now, yellow ochre, what is it, yep, yellow ochre and white, keep it pretty deep for now, can always lighten it later. Look at that for application, that's the beauty of working with a knife. You can block it in. What's the next colour? Bit of Viridian green with that yellow ochre mix. The sky seems to get greener as it gets higher. It's not really clearly doing that now, but I know I'll anticipate it. I know it'll do it soon. So 
sounds like a drum, that canvas. Might use a bit of French ultramarine, magenta. Actually, I'll put a bit of burn sound. I don't really need a strong, super strong colour there. Because it's a dark tone, because you've got to remember, we're painting the darkness at the moment. Even the sky is still fairly dark. Okay, let's get some blending going on. Just using the knife to soften and blend it all together. Doesn't matter if it goes too low key because I want it to be low key because it's night in the daytime. I wouldn't want it to go that low key, obviously. Right, I'll stand back and have a look. What do we got? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now. Just gonna take a little bit of paint off here. That's where I'm gonna have my fire. Just put this in the bin. Got some cad red there. Now I'll just drift that cad red out into the atmosphere, around the edges. Like so. Bit of cad yellow with the red to make it more of an orange. Bit of white with the cad yellow. Have a look at what we got, eh? Yeah, that's a fire. Now that's a fire. All right. The lizard are in crimson, which is like a slightly blue red. Makes a nice pinky color. See if that's the colour I want. Seems to be kind of glowing a bit like that just here. I don't believe it, there's a bug landing in the painting. Probably attracted by the light. Trying to get that pink glow going over there, right? Wiping the knife clean. Mm -hmm. Some white. Mixed with a cat orangey yellow colour.
wipe that nice clean. Bin run. Taking paint off here to draw the edge of the gorge. Goes up like so. Taking that dark tone right up now, very carefully, so that it's meeting. See what we got, eh? Aha! Uh -huh. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Pure white. Still a couple of stars, so let's get the little beggars in, eh? Like I stuck my fire too a little bit. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Okay. As it's getting light, I'm just seeing subtle tones start to develop in the foreground, which the camera probably can't pick up on, but. Subtle, subtle, subtle magentas. That's the beauty about working on site. Seeing those subtle colours. Stand back and have a look. Just work on the draftsmanship of this hill. Got it a little bit bung. <sighs> Still got it a bit bung. Must be too early in the morning. Let's just clean up this edge. What do we got?
taking a bit of paint off. The sky's so bright. Let me just alter this camera because the sky's so bright, you can't see my painting anymore. So, ah, look at that. That's better. We'll go like that, eh? There we go. Oh, yeah. Um, yellow. In run. Just waiting for something. Don't know what. Don't know what, but I'm waiting for something. a bit. Clean that edge while I'm waiting. Very clean knife. Simplifying a little bit. Rubbing a bit of paint off here and there, as, as well as applying paint. Subtle stuff. Yeah, that red's in there, that's good. Yeah, the light's hitting that, yeah, that's good. Right, it's probably best not to do too much more because it's all gonna change, it'll be completely different to what it was, so I'm not painting a sun rise, I'm painting a pre-dawn. Which is slightly different. What do you reckon? Just that sun promising to come through. What do you got in the camera? Let's have a look. You see, it's so light in the camera now. The sun, cameras cannot capture what you're seeing, I tell you. It is way too light in tone. It's still quite dark, the ground. But you won't, you'll get bleached out. The sky will be bleached out, see? I can see both at the moment. Still a bit of smearing. Okay, look at that magenta purple. Too much. A little bit lighter, a little bit lighter in turn. Just 
There's those subtle blues that you get near the fire, you get in amongst the charcoal and all that. Nice. Now, of course, you've always got to have your sparks, don't you? Your sparks to go shooting up. From the fire. That little purple glow, pinky colour, that was there at the start. There you go, because that was the promise of the sun coming up, just on the horizon there. Right. Now some pure cad red. Let's get it on the edge of the knife. Like so, just mix it till we get it right on the edge of the knife. That's right where it meets the uh, horizon line. Pure red, so you get that intensity of bright light. Just the glow where the sun is. That little bit of a glow there. All right, let's see what we've got now. Sun's just trying to peer up. Oh, it's just dying off a bit. There's your uh, pre-dawn painting, or dawn, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Still early in the morning for me. So you can see I've got the crackling fire and the smoke. You've got the glow on the horizon for the promise of the next sunrise. A few stars, but not too many left over. Just the subtle light on those gum trees over there in the creek. A few sparks flying off the fire. Might just have a bit of that crisscross, they really open up perfectly. That's a nice, light, fluffy one. All right. Just a bit of peanut butter this time. I sometimes put jam on it, but I want a bit more uh, protein and who knows what. Good gear. Yeah. Today, Chambers Gorge. Now I'm just doing, I've just blocked in with a little bit of uh, turps this time, believe it or not. Just turps and a brush. On board, white pine board. I've just zoomed in a little bit, like a zoom lens. So I've actually brought the hills a little bit closer to me because they're the things that I'm finding absolutely fantastically interesting. Your camera's shrinking my way a bit anyway. But um, pretty much just want to capture that gorge itself. So now I'm ready to go. Let's do it. So 
burnt sienna, yellow ochre, white flies, <laughs> cobalt blue, yellow ochre. Get more blue. There's plenty of flies again, they're blinking action every single day at the moment. They're loving it out here. Why wouldn't you, I guess? That's quite brown, but I'm going to leave it at that for now. Just get that in. They love days like this. Okay, a bit more blue and white. Cobalt blue and white. What do we got? On. There was a big gust of wind, I don't know if you can hear it in the camera or not. Um, the camera so it doesn't knock over. We should tie a weight on that. Getting ready for those gusts. Out of the middle of nowhere. All right, a bit more cobalt blue and white. More blue though this time. It's getting higher. It's stronger in chromatic saturation. Now I'm going to, because it's midday and there's much more intensity of blue in the sky, in an evening shot you don't get such a blue sky. Look how blue it is up there. Right, so I'm going to go for some French ultramarine, which is a, just a beautiful colour in white. What have we got so far? Let's have a look. We go darker than that. magenta in it as it goes a little bit higher. Just to make it slightly more red blue, slightly darker. Just clean this off, I've got a brush, might use a brush on this one. Just mix that kind of browny colour I've got in the sky. kind of ochre effect you get in these skies. <sighs> Go around the edges here, be very careful on the edges. Okay, now I can get stuck into this. Just blend, 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 blend. You can see why I like to use that easel just there rather than this one. She shakes around this one in comparison. But I thought I'd try something different today, so I've got this one out. Just get all these mixed up. All different marks going all different ways. And she go 
got that about right. Come back down, blend it in. Stand back and have a look at that blend. And I'll take a tribe of flies with me as I go. Blue! <laughs> little ripper. Bin run. I guess if I get any of that colour on my shirt I won't see it, will I? Some of these beautiful earthy colours, burnt sienna's, yellow ochres, a bit of that white. Oh, we got here. Just get some in to start with and we'll work it out. Get a coverage. Close look, you'll see the hills kind of spiral like this. Kind of a repetitious form in them, which is absolutely interesting. Like so. There's more of a jutting back over here if I can get that pellet knife into there. More brown and magentas, white. Just gotta feel it as you go. at the top of this, yellow ochre and white, lighter tone, I love the variety, just there's the silvery qualities now, just here a bit more yellow ochre, it's all twisted and gnarled, at the top here, where are we, up there, look at those flies, it's really twisted, you can see all the ancient seabed twisted as anything, right now we get into some chocolate, so I go for burnt sienna, 
magenta and yellow ochre in a darker tone. Yeah. Put those gnarly twisted chocolate bits in. Fantastic. Whoa, fly, fly, fly. See all the variety of colours I've got in there, they're all subtle variances. Great, I love that stuff. That's why I wanted to paint midday as opposed to the evening. In the evening like, you get all those beautiful golden colours, but it actually makes it hard to see all the variety in the rock colours themselves.
Well, here we are. Another new campsite, Red Hill. Fantastic location. Got here in the last oh, half an hour of sunlight, I guess. Beautiful spot. Tomorrow morning, I'll be up on top of that hill, painting a hill just behind you guys, which is called Red Hill. And tomorrow you'll see why. Got to get ready for bed. Got to get up about five o'clock or whatever if I want to get up that hill and paint a picture as the sun's rising. That's about the time I normally get up when I'm plein air painting, 4.35. That way you get the morning light. I'm just enjoying this fire. 